The boom in renewable energy has a mystery at its core. There's a lot of green energy that can be produced when the wind blows, the sun shines, and the waves pound the shore. But what do we do when the sky grows dark and weather is calm? The answer is to ramp up conventional power production, supplying the grid by burning fossil fuels. Now this is a 20th century solution to a 21st century issue. It contrasts sharply with strategies for carbon neutrality. According to some energy experts, developing larger lithium-ion batteries will be necessary for a cleaner future. Others say that the world's best chance is green hydrogen. But some are betting on gravity instead of the unstoppable force that surrounds us all rather than chemistry. This new area of energy storage technology is in theory extremely straightforward and is supported by Newton's immutable logic that what goes up must come down. The concept looks a little bit like this. Use green energy when it's available to lift a massive weight to a specific height. Then, release the load when there's no more renewable energy sources available by using gravity to drive a generator. More than 90% of the world's existing high-capacity energy storage is achieved via a similar technique called pumped hydro. It basically uses excess energy to channel water upward, then, when necessary, channel it down through hydroelectric generators. This is an established procedure, yet there are serious problems with scalability. Hydro projects require precise geographic conditions, rough terrain, and a lot of water. They're also large, expensive, and have prohibitive capital expenses. Energy storage systems that can be installed practically anywhere on a large scale are required if the world is to attain net zero. So it's pretty clear that we need some new solutions and we need them fast. The previously mentioned technique is being studied by the green engineering startup Gravitricity, based in Edinburgh. The team successfully tested its first gravity battery prototype in April 2021, which consisted of a 15-meter or 49-foot steel tower holding a 50-ton iron weight. Electric motors lifted the large metal box inch by inch into the air before lowering it back to earth gradually, using the downward drag to drive many electric generators. According to one of the senior test and simulator engineers for Gravitricity, this demonstration installation was small scale. Nonetheless, it generated 250 kilowatts of instantaneous power, which could briefly power about 750 houses. What the team discovered regarding the possible lifetime of their technology was equally encouraging. Furthermore, the system is built so that individual parts can easily be changed out rather than having to replace the entire thing at some point in its lifespan. This makes sure that there's a long operation life on this system. While the Gravitricity prototype pointed upward, the company's focus is now below ground. Over the past year, we've seen engineers scouting for abandoned coal mines in Chile, South Africa, Eastern Europe, and Britain. Charlie Blair, who is the managing director, says the justification is simple. Why build buildings when we can harness the geology of the soil to support our weights? It seems like a really neat solution, especially when you consider the fact that the world has a lot of abandoned mines. Even better, these abandoned mine holes are large enough to accommodate a full-sized gravitricity installation and extend down at least 300 meters or 984 feet, and possibly even deeper. According to Blair, there's also the political will to make it happen, with decision makers eager to capitalize on public support for a so-called just transition. The idea of a new, low-carbon economy that ensures the livelihoods of fossil fuel workers and their communities. A subterranean prototype, most likely located in the Czech Republic, should therefore be operational by 2024 with sufficient funding. But first, there's some obstacles we have to clear. According to Blair, we need to extensively examine the existing civil structures, the shaft liner, and the shaft surrounds, and make sure they're perfectly sound and capable of standing up several thousand tones. Methane gas and flooding in the mines are further possible safety concerns. In light of this, Gravitricity is also considering digging its own custom-built shafts. This is a project that will initially cost more, but ultimately guarantee much greater uniformity. 
Nevertheless, not every innovator understands the advantages of a below-the-surface solution. The stunning steel and concrete prototype from Energy Vault, another pioneer in the gravity battery field, stands more than 20 stories tall in a valley in southern Switzerland. When green power supply exceeds demand, one of several AI-controlled cranes lifts a pair of 30-tone blocks upwards. When demand outstrips supply, they go back down, generating enough energy for thousands of homes. Energy Vault is prepared to launch a commercial rollout with its technology, which has undergone extensive testing and received an investment of over $402 million. The company has created an EVX modular structure that houses thousands of weights on a trolley system and is a little more aesthetically pleasing than the angular Swiss prototype. Robert Picconi, the CEO of Energy Vault, recommends visualizing it as a warehouse full of energy elevators. The blocks made of recycled material rise when clean electricity is being delivered, and they fall when the power grid requires more power. A 100 megawatts per hour EVX can power about 25,000 houses for a day. The overall storage capacity of each site will depend on its size and architecture, but even at the low end, the buildings will occupy dozens of acres. According to Picconi, the answer is no. These systems are likely to be located distant from populated areas, next to wind and solar farms. We won't have to dig any particularly deep holes or deal with any significant site-specific constraints. Basically, any place where a 20-story skyscraper can be built will do. The message seems to be getting through, with interest pouring from all around Europe, America, the Middle East, Australia, and China. Energy Vault's order book is quickly filling up. The latter is particularly interesting, according to Picconi, who is optimistic that it can signal a change in strategy for the country that's the world's largest emitter of greenhouse gases. Although it may be wishful thinking, eventually all nations will have to adopt some kind of green energy storage. This includes long duration storage, keeping the lights on for an extended time when renewable generation is low, and short bursts of electricity for when the grid requires an additional supply. This second point relates to a serious problem facing green energy developers. Electricity grids were designed to work with conventional power stations, not renewables. Electrical engineering specialist Thomas Morstan from the University of Edinburgh says, The grid needs to be balanced at all times. Operators must continuously balance supply and demand, but that can be challenging when using intermittent energy sources like wind or solar, which are prone to abrupt changes. A tremendous amount of torque is produced by sheer weight and gradual fall of a gravity battery, which enables the device to deliver its maximum power nearly instantly. Because of this, the technology is particularly good at keeping the grid in balance, lowering the possibility of major infrastructure damage and blackouts by taming second-by-second -second variations. What about lithium? Well, lithium-ion batteries, the kind that run our cell phones, laptops, and electric cars, can ramp up just as quickly and have compatible round-trip efficiency numbers as gravity systems. In recent years, lithium battery prices have also decreased dramatically. Why not just create chemical batteries that are bigger and bigger? It's crucial to take into account both the initial investment and the system's overall lifetime costs. Since gravity batteries are mechanical devices, they're liable to malfunction. Sometimes a cable breaks, the gearboxes become stuck, or a rust spot shows up. Although these problems are troubling, they're not fatal because individual parts can usually be changed without too much difficulty. Gravity batteries can endure up to 50 years due to their repairability, according to Asme Barada, an energy storage expert at the International University of Rabat in Morocco. When compared to their electromechanical equivalents, things are different. According to Barada's research, they found that lithium batteries cost twice as much over their entire lifetime as mechanical alternatives. Lithium ion cells degrade, which means their storage capacity drops irreparably over time. 
Chemical batteries have limitations on how often they can cycle each day if you're trying to preserve longevity, but gravity systems don't have to worry about that because their parts are easier to replace. Barada is certain that a non-lithium method of storing green energy is necessary due to issues with human rights violations since the mining of cobalt has been linked to child labor. She and her team are currently developing their own water-based gravity battery prototype with funding from the governments of Spain and Morocco. According to Barada, instead of lifting a heavy solid object, extra green energy will be used to raise a submerged piston, with the return trip propelling high-pressure water through a generator. Similar systems are being developed in Germany and California, while researchers in Nevada are looking into a fresh approach that is inspired by railroads. One can't predict how many of these will materialize. What isn't in doubt is that the world needs bold and creative climate solutions. Now there's no magic solution on this front yet, but gravity batteries with their ability to tap into an essentially limitless, all-pervasive force most likely have a major role to play. Alright guys, that wraps up today's video, so please show your support by giving us a thumbs up and hitting the subscribe button before you go.